Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Senior Technical Evangelist at Dremio. And in this video, what I want to do is show you how you can set up a local instance of Apache Polaris. So that way you can, you know, experiment and start working with this sort of really new, really cool uh, iceberg catalog. Yeah. So I'm going to walk you through this repo that I made for setting up a, easy to set up a local environment. Also, just keep in mind that, you know, uh, Polaris uses the Apache Iceberg REST catalog specification, so it can use any uh, engine that, that, that basically complies or can act or connect to REST catalog catalogs. Uh, including Dremio, which Dremio actually has a dedicated Apache Polaris connector that is available in uh, the Enterprise Edition of Dremio for, for those who are using that. Also, uh, Apache Polaris will be the underlying technology in the upcoming Dremio catalog uh, for Dremio Software Edition, which is currently in private preview. So if you're someone looking for a hybrid cloud and on-prem iceberg catalog that can hold both your cloud and on-prem tables in one place, do contact the Dremio team to see if you can get involved in the private preview, the public preview, eventually uh, later uh, gen gen general availability. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, a very unique uh, implement catalog, ma managed catalog implementation. But let's just show you how you can set this up so you can see what Polaris can do. Okay, because oftentimes the goal here was to try to create an environment so that way you can kind of set it up a little bit easier than having to go clone the, or the original repo and, and rebuild an image and all this stuff. So um, I've done a lot of that work for you. Okay, so here we go. So he I have this repo. The repo will be in the video description so you can set that up. Um, but I have the repo opened up here, um, here in my VS Code. So essentially in there should be a Docker Compose file. And this Docker Compose file really just has two services. So it has a Polaris service, which I've already pre-generated into an image for you. So that way you don't have to build the image straight from the repo. Um, and I'll try to keep this image updated uh, periodically. And basically right now it's set up for us to use our file system as the, where we're gonna store everything just so that way we can try things out. So that's what this is for. So what's gonna happen is that there's this iceberg data folder that's here in the repo. That's gonna be where all your table and data will get generated. And that's gonna be mounted as a volume on both the Polaris container and the container for um, our notebook slash spark environment, which is this image right here. Okay, so just the kind of thing to keep in mind is that both containers need to have access to this a shared file system. So that's why this volume is mounted to both because they both need to write to it. Okay, metadata is gonna be written by Polaris and Spark is gonna be writing the actual data files. So both of them need to have write access to that storage system. So if we're talking about like AWS, you, what you would do is you would put in your AWS credentials in the environment variables uh, for both containers for uh, that all to work nice and smooth. Uh, okay, if you're using AWS. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how to use it with the file system. So now that you see the Docker Compose image, all I have to do is just do Docker Compose up. Okay, and that will begin running. What I do is I create like a scratch MD file for me to just kind of sketch down some of the information I need to get. Okay, because what's going to happen is that in the output that you're going to see here, um, in the Polaris output specifically, you're going to want to get sort of the root um, ID and secret. This is going to allow us to begin making API calls to start setting up Polaris. Okay, so up oh, there it was. Okay, and basically this is what you're looking for is this, this line right here. So you see it says realm default room root credentials, and then there's the root credentials, this is the ID, and this is the secret. So I'm just gonna copy both of those over, paste those right over here, because I'll need that for all the subsequent calls. The order of all these different uh, API calls are in the readme for the repo, so you can follow them step by step. So the next thing I need to do is create sort of a admin user Okay, or get actually no, get a authentication token for the admin user to make API calls. So the basic what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ID, copy that in here into the client ID for this API call, and then I'm gonna take the secret, copy that over the secret value in this curl call. Again, you can use Postman, uh, you know, whatever API tool you'd like to use to do this. Okay. And then I will paste that into my terminal, run that, and that's going to create a admin, or again, give me the auth token that I need for the admin user. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the results of that call here. So that way I have it for reference. So I'm just going to copy the output from that call here. Okay, and now I have the the token, which is this thing right here. So I'm going to copy over that token. Okay, and paste that in as the password for the next API call. Okay, cool. And I'm going to just basically continually do that as I go along. Okay, and basically what this API call is going to do is that we're making a call to the catalogs endpoint to create a catalog. Because in Polaris, you can make multiple catalogs. Okay, either internal catalogs that Polaris manages or external catalogs, which may refer to like an external Nessie catalog or an external Gravitino catalog or AWS Glue, um, some external catalog that you may want to be able to see the tables within. within. Uh, we're going to create an internal catalog, which we'll call, this is the name of the catalog. It's an internal catalog. We're going to be using the file storage type, which means we're using just the local file system. And we're going to be mapping it to uh, this folder right here. Okay, and again, that folder data, well, we have that mapped. Again, in our Docker Compose file, I mapped that particular directory to this iceberg data folder. So essentially, when we started up the environment, this got mapped to that directory on both containers. Okay, so now I'm going to take this API call and then just put that into terminal, run that. And again, I'll probably eventually write like a Python script that just kind of does all of this automatically. Um, and I'll add that to the repo. But for now, you have these steps. Okay, cool. So now we have this. Okay, so basically what we just did, did is we created the catalog. So the catalog is created. Wonderful. Now what we can do is we can confirm that the catalog is created through this API uh, call. So let me just grab that token, paste it into here. And this is just going to basically grab me the list of catalogs that are available in Polaris currently. We've created one, so we should only get back one result. So if I hit paste, I hit enter, and I see there's only one catalog, because you see here's like the array of catalogs. And there's only one entry, and that is our catalog that we just created. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to just move this over because I don't really need this as much anymore. Okay. Now we'll go to the next one. So now we have a catalog. But again, to use a catalog in Polaris, you need to have several other things. You need to have a catalog role that determines what access is possible to the catalog. We, then we need to assign that catalog role to a principal role. And that principal role needs to be assigned to a principal, aka a user or a service. Um, so... Let's get to that. So next thing we're going to do is create a principal, aka a user. Okay. So I'm going to copy that token over to this API call here. Copy over the curl. Paste that into terminal. Okay. And now I have the principal. This I'm going to want to copy because that principal is going to have its own token and secret or its own sort of credentials that I'm going to need when we get to Spark a little bit later on. Okay, so I'm just going to paste that into here for now. So that way I have the result of that output for now. Let me just make sure that it all matches up. Okay, good. Okay, and then next, again, let me go copy that token. Boop. And then paste that into the next call. Because again, we're doing all of these calls as the root user. That's the, that's, but the root user is mainly for managing Polaris. This principle that we just created, that's going to be used for actually like, making tables and stuff like that. Okay. So here we go. So now we have that going. And I just copy this one. What this is going to do is create a principal role that we can then assign to that principal a little bit later on. Okay, so we're creating a role called Polaris user role. It's right there in the API call. So you see I'm saying, hey, create me a new principal role. The name of this uh, role is principal role. If it gives you no error, that means it all went fine. Then I, you know, I just basically gonna keep going down these API calls and doing that. So the next one, okay, should be assigning the principal role. Okay, boop. So I'm basically saying, hey, the Polaris user we created now has this Polaris user role, and we'll get any permissions that that Polaris user role kind of gives. Okay, so that one is um, done. Okay. So you can see here, I'm signing it to that Polaris user. It's in the URL. Okay.
There we go. Okay. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to create a catalog role. So we're calling creating Polaris catalog roles. You can see the name right here. Okay, again, I gotta make sure I copy over that token. Doot, 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 doot. Cool. Okay. Now, then I'm gonna copy over this call. There we go. And now I've created, I've created now a catalog role. So that catalog role is specifically for the Polaris catalog that we created earlier. And this role I can then assign to sort of permissions. I'm like, hey, anyone with this role can do this to the stuff in that catalog. The, the, the name spaces, the tables, and so forth. Okay. And here I have, okay, here we're going to assign that catalog role to the Polaris user role. Okay, again, I got to make sure I put that token in there. Cool, 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 cool. Make sure to watch the repo because again, I'll be adding scripts. So that way you, in the future, you'd be able to just pass in the, those initial credentials and then like a Python script will just run and kind of generate all that for you. Uh, based, okay. Now, basically at that point, we've kind of got everything kind of set up. Only thing we have left to do is to say, so like the, 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 the principal, the user has a role. That role has been assigned a catalog role, which is under a catalog. But that catalog role right now doesn't really say what permissions it's giving. So I'm just gonna give it pretty much permission over everything. That's the content manage, catalog manage content permission, which kind of basically allows it to do mostly anything. So I just gotta make sure I copy over the, the right token. Cool. Okay, and at this point, we've now have Polaris set up to go. We can now begin using it with our favorite engines or tools. Okay, so when you spun up this environment, it should have also created a environment for Spark, which should be at, I wanna say 8080, if I'm right. Um, nope, that's the Spark master. Um, in case you wanted to watch your Spark jobs, you could go there. Um, let me go back to the Docker Compose file. Uh, 81, no, no, that's the wrong container. Here we go, oh, 88888, okay. So I'm gonna go to localhost 8888. Cool, okay, so basically I can now go create a Python uh, notebook. And then again here, in and this will be inside the readme as well. I'm just gonna copy over this Python code just to test this all out. And we'll go over what it's doing. Okay, and again, basically I'm just starting up a Spark session, but in here, notice this, these variables here. Okay, I'm creating a, a URL to where the Polaris catalog is. Okay, so that's the URL for the Polaris catalog. This is the user or the catalog that I'm specifically connecting to. Now I got to pass in credentials for a user. Now, again, I don't want to use these credentials that were in what I copied and pasted because again, I created a whole new principle and I need to use that principle's uh, credentials. So I need to go back up to where I had that principle call to find those credentials right here. Okay, so I need the client ID for that specific principle, which is right there. So I'll copy that to the first part of this number before the colon. And then I need the secret, which is the number or these token after that. Okay, and then I paste that right over here. Okay, and that's basically gonna make sure that I'm logging in as the right user who has permission over this catalog with the currently running Polaris catalog. Then here I'm just setting up Spark. Okay, and again, keep in mind, we're using uh, REST catalog. That's gonna be our catalog type. So I'm setting that up here. So I'm creating a catalog called Polaris in Spark. So in Spark, you can set up like sub catalogs. Um, so I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna create a catalog called Polaris that's the namespace for that catalog. The data is gonna be stored here in the catalog. Okay, so it's basically gonna then refer to the catalog details as far as where those data, data is gonna be stored. Okay, um, this is just uh, some header stuff that's needed. 
Um, here we're setting the actual catalog implementation. Here we're saying, hey, what's the URL of the catalog? Here we're passing the credentials for the catalog. Here we're passing the scope, which is this right over here, which just tells it like sort of how um, it's being used. And then token refresh. So that way um, it'll keep refreshing the token uh, for when it's making authenticating calls. So this basically sets, configures the catalog. Now, again, if you're using a tool, like let's say, um, you know, depending on what tool you're using, how you configure a catalog, and it may be a little bit different, but generally the same properties need to be passed through. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a namespace. Think of that as like creating a folder in the catalog. So we're going to create a folder called DB because Polaris is the catalog. So Polaris.db would be a namespace in the catalog. And then I'm going to create a table, Polaris.db.names, because I'm creating a table in the namespace, in the folder. Um, and then I'm going to add some data to it, and then we're going to query it. Okay, so... What I'll do now is I'll just put my cursor right here. I'm going to hit play or let it run the cell. And what it's going to start doing, because again, this is the first time I'm running this on this uh, run up of this environment. First thing it's going to do is download all those particular jars. So like right here, I'm specifying like, hey, it needs to download the Spark jar. Um, this is more if you're using AWS, the Hadoop, the Hadoop AWS jar, but it's going to begin downloading these jars from uh, Maven. And then it'll begin actually configuring and starting the, the Spark session. So you can actually see all that output here as it generates. So it's taking a moment to, to do that. I will pause the video while that runs. Okay, so now it's completed sort of starting to set up the, or completed downloading the, the libraries. So now it should be getting into the point where it's going to begin running the Spark session. Again, this is running on my local laptop, so this is... And it's like going to be slower than having like a full-blown Spark cluster out there. So there we go. It's starting to get all set up. Spark is now running. Okay. Cool. Okay, good. It created the namespace. It created the table. And now it's querying it. And that looks successful. Good. And yeah, there we go. And there we have a successful query. Okay, so we successfully queried the data. Okay, so basically it's up and running and it is working. And if I go back to my environment, I should see that data inside that iceberg data folder. Because again, we map that to the two containers. And in there, look, it created a folder called DB. Okay, and in there I see the table for names. I see all the parquet files for the data. And I see all the metadata files in there. Okay, so this is up and running and working. So now you could actually sit there and practice with your, your different engines on, in a local environment uh, to work with uh, a Polaris catalog or just get more acquainted with working with Polaris and its API to create, um, set up different permissions and things like that. So this creates a good environment for you to just kind of play around and get used to how this this, this uh, piece of software works. Again, I will I will update this repo with newer, ver as different newer versions of Polaris come out, I will update the, the Docker image to with a new container for those newer versions. So keep an eye on this. So make sure you hit that watch button on the repo. Again, the link is in the video description. This is Alex Merced, Senior Tech Evangelist from Dremio. If you haven't gone to Dremio and checked out Dremio University, there's a lot of great iceberg education in general there for you to check out. I'll see you all later. Have a great day and enjoy.